In the vast, seemingly silent expanse of the cosmos, a new enigma emerged, shattering the long-held belief that the movements within it could be predicted, explained, and catalogued. On an ordinary day last month, an unidentified cold, angular silhouette ripped through the void, its trajectory too perfect, its origin too distant, and its purpose a mystery. Scientists, initially perplexed, named this anomaly Three-I Atlas, but the name barely scratched the surface of the tension it brought. For this was not just a rock from another star system. It moved too cleanly, rotated too evenly, and reflected too much light for its size, behaving less like a fragment and more like a machine. When the James Webb Space Telescope captured the first real image of this object, it didn't just send back pixels, it sent a warning. With every new packet of data, the object's uniqueness deepened the mystery. It wasn't a natural celestial body, it was something else. Something artificial. The initial signal picked up by NASA's Atlas system on July 1st seemed ordinary at first. A fast-moving dot, another flicker across the sky but as automated telescopes triangulated its position and path, astronomers quickly realized something was wrong. It wasn't just fast, it was too fast, blazing through space at over 152,000 miles per hour on a hyperbolic trajectory, which meant it came from beyond our solar system. The first anomaly was its approach. Instead of a chaotic plunge from the outskirts, it moved parallel to the plane of our solar system, threading a path between the orbits of the inner planets. Even more bizarre, it timed its closest approach to the sun when Earth would be on the opposite side, completely out of view. That's not just unusual, that's strategic, as if it had been designed to avoid direct observation as scientists traced its origin back through the darkness, the trajectory didn't point to the Kuiper Belt or the Oort Cloud, but instead from a region near the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. No natural object should be able to make that journey intact and certainly not with that kind of control. Once the trajectory was confirmed, astronomers petitioned to redirect the James Webb Space Telescope toward it. What they captured changed everything. From its vantage point beyond the moon, Webb's instruments detected an object reflecting far more light than expected, given its estimated size. If it were made of rock or ice, it would have to be massive to shine that brightly. But it wasn't massive. It was relatively small, meaning its surface was unnaturally reflective, like polished metal. Spectral readings confused analysts further. No cometary tail, no outgassing, no dust, just a cold, solid, high albedo structure that seemed to absorb and redistribute heat in controlled patterns. One side of the object was consistently cooler, like a shielded surface designed to protect internal systems, and then came the movement. Not tumbling, not spinning chaotically, it rotated with rhythm and balance, maintaining orientation toward the sun in ways no natural object ever could. Thermal imaging showed repeating pulses of heat, almost as if internal systems were managing the exposure. And at the core of all this data was a single chilling realization. We were not looking at a wandering rock. We were looking at a vehicle. Over the next few weeks, the James Webb Telescope continued monitoring the object, and each new packet of data only deepened the mystery. Most celestial objects are slaves to gravity. Their paths curve, their speeds decay, their motions are dictated by celestial mechanics. But Three-Eye Atlas didn't play by those rules. It made subtle course corrections mid-flight, with no visible propulsion system, no jets, no outgassing, no interaction with solar wind that could explain it. And yet, it turned, it aligned, it reacted, as if it was aware. This was the same signature that sparked debate with Oumuamua years earlier, 
but this time it was stronger, more precise, more deliberate. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, who once theorized that Oumuamua might have been an alien probe immediately called for attention. He urged the scientific community to measure non-gravitational acceleration, a phenomenon that, if detected, could indicate the presence of artificial propulsion. And that's exactly what they found. Not only was the object accelerating in strange ways, but it was also doing so in response to environmental conditions. When solar radiation intensified, the object adjusted its orientation to minimize heat exposure. When entering magnetic pockets, it seemed to slow down. This wasn't a comet adjusting to its surroundings. This was navigation. Perhaps the most haunting detail of all came not from motion, but from the lack of sound, the complete and deliberate silence. While scientists from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center analyzed Webb's high-resolution data, they discovered faint electromagnetic anomalies surrounding the object. At first, they were thought to be background radiation, but after filtering and enhancing, a pattern emerged. Low-frequency pulses structured in mathematical sequences, prime numbers, Fibonacci ratios, not noise, but information. The pulses didn't seem aimed at Earth. They radiated outward in all directions, subtle and constant, as if the object wasn't broadcasting a message, but instead maintaining a connection with what or who remains unanswered. Further analysis of its outer surface revealed layered composites, unfamiliar to any known material on Earth, yet bearing similarities to concepts in metamaterials engineering surfaces that can adapt in real time to electromagnetic interference. The object was equipped to hide, to blend, to observe, but perhaps most disturbingly, to learn. And as the data streamed in and scientists pieced it together, a terrifying theory began to take hold. Maybe this wasn't the first time something like this had passed through our skies. Maybe it was simply the first time we were able to see it. As data from the James Webb Telescope and other observatories accumulated, researchers began constructing detailed models of 3 eye Atlas's structure, and what they uncovered was unlike anything found in nature. The shape was neither spherical, like an asteroid, nor irregular, like a comet. Instead, it exhibited an angular symmetry with panels that seemed to shift orientation based on the object's alignment with the sun. These weren't chaotic movements. They were adaptive behaviors, reminiscent of biological reflexes. The object's rotation remained fixed on a constant axis, like a spacecraft utilizing internal gyroscopic stabilization. Even more intriguing, when solar wind patterns changed, Certain segments of its surface realigned with smooth, synchronized motion. There were no gears, no visible mechanical parts. It was as if the outer shell itself was alive, responding to stimuli the way living cells adapt to heat or light. This led to a radical theory within the astrobiology community. What if 3 eye Atlas wasn't just a machine, but a hybrid organism? a synthesis of artificial and biological components, engineered not merely to survive the cosmos, but to adapt and evolve within it. A kind of deep space life form, not born, but built. Then, just as the evidence became overwhelming, everything went dark. Observation logs that had been open to public access were taken offline. Live feeds from key observatories went dormant. NASA, the ESA and other major space agencies released vague statements emphasizing the importance of cautious analysis, but offered no updates. Scientists who had been vocal in early stages of observation stopped appearing in interviews. And behind closed doors, access to Webb's most sensitive infrared data was restricted under national security directives. It wasn't just scientific caution, it was containment. 
journalists attempting to file FOIA requests were met with blanket denials. Leaked internal memos hinted at something too volatile to release to the public something that could shake more than the field of astronomy. And so the information freeze began, not out of confusion, but out of fear. Fear that this object, if it truly was artificial, was not simply a wandering relic, that it might be operational, that it might be watching, or worse, waiting. In the silence, new theories began to bubble to the surface, no longer dismissed as fringe speculation, Perhaps Three-Eye Atlas wasn't a visitor. Perhaps it was an evaluator. And the world had just failed, or passed, a test it didn't even know it was taking. While official channels remained silent, a small group of independent astrophysicists and AI specialists began combing through the final data sets released before the blackout. It was among this data, buried within the heat fluctuations captured by Webb's most sensitive thermal sensors, that they found something almost too precise to be random. The object's surface temperature wasn't static. It pulsed, not like a dying star, not like thermal decay, but in a patterned rhythm, a sequence of heat signatures spaced with prime number intervals, forming a mathematical structure that looked uncannily like an encoded message. And this message wasn't transmitted outward like a broadcast. It was embedded within the object itself as though it was encoded in its own thermal behaviour. The implication was staggering. Not only was Three-Eye Atlas communicating, it was doing so in a language so advanced it could only be detected through machine learning algorithms, analysing energy variants. If the message was real, then it wasn't meant to be heard. It was meant to be decoded by us. At this precise moment in our technological evolution, which meant the object knew we would be watching, and perhaps that we were finally ready. The final act of the object, at least the last one we've been allowed to see, was perhaps the most chilling. After months of stable motion, Three-Eye Atlas suddenly executed a shift in trajectory, not a chaotic tumble, not a slingshot around a planet, a precise, silent, controlled arc that would now carry it out of the solar system, not on the path it came in, but at a steeper angle, as if heading to a rendezvous point. This manoeuvre could not be explained by any gravitational influence. It defied all known mechanics, it wasn't drifting. It was leaving with intent. Scientists calculated that this new path would take the object toward a region of space almost completely empty. No known stars, no planets, no gravitational bodies of interest, which raised a terrifying possibility. Maybe that emptiness wasn't a void at all. Maybe it was a signal drop-off point, or worse, a relay station a place where whatever three-eye Atlas had recorded could be passed along to something else. And just like that, the object was gone, still detectable, but fading, silent, watching us with no eyes, listening with no ears. It had come, it had seen, and now it was gone, leaving behind only questions, heat trails, and fear. It didn't flash lights, it didn't emit sound, it didn't change course toward Earth or beam a signal to our antennas. But what Three-Eye Atlas did was far more disturbing. It came in silence, moved with purpose, absorbed our attention, and then vanished. And as it slipped back into the void from which it came, the realisation settled like cold dust across every observatory, laboratory and control room on Earth. We had not witnessed a random visitor. We had been studied because all the evidence, the heat modulation, the non-gravitational manoeuvres, the prime encoded pulses, none of it pointed to chance. It pointed to design, to intelligence, to observation. And if something is built to observe, then somewhere, someone is watching. Maybe it was testing our reactions. Maybe it was verifying if we were ready. Or maybe it wasn't here for us at all. 
but we saw it anyway. And that changes everything. James Webb wasn't meant to capture this. It was designed to look into the past and to study stars born billions of years ago. But instead, it captured something alive in the present, something not of this earth, operating in our time, in our system, just beyond our reach. And in doing so, it may have opened a door we weren't prepared to step through. Because now, there's no going back. The silence of the cosmos has been broken, not by a transmission, but by a presence. And whether Three-Eye Atlas was a messenger, a scout, or something else entirely, it left a mark, a shift in perception, a scar in our sense of isolation. We are no longer alone, not because we've made contact, but because we were seen. And the most terrifying part, it never needed to say a word. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think Three-Eye Atlas really was? A machine, a probe, a traveller from another time? Let me know in the comments. I read every single one. And if this story left you breathless, if it made you look at the night sky a little differently, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and share this video with someone who still believes we're the ones doing the exploring.